Marge. Marjorie Bartholomew Simpson. Homer doesn't appreciate you. Homer doesn't love you, Marge. And I want to let you know who literally worships the ground that he walks on. And I kept wondering, like, why? Why could you hate this man so much? Like, why? Why could you treat this woman so disrespectfully, Homer? What is wrong with you? Homer, Homer, do you not understand what type of woman you have cooking you eggs and waffles and biscuits every day? Do you not understand that, Homer? Do you not understand that, nigga? Do you not? But, you know, in reality, I guess it's like that with everybody, you know. Everybody know that one friend who, on my chin and stuff like that to try to um, prevent the razor bumps. Um, which usually kind of works me but I think about doing that as it makes my hair or my face grow faster than I would want it to grow. You know, I actually do enjoy having the baby face appearance, you know. But what's going on with you? How you guys doing? What's going on in your world? What's going on in your life? What's going on in the world of the wonderful world of those who are on YouTube, of those who are on my podcast app, of those who are on my Facebook Live? What's going on with you? Right now, I'm just kicking back, you know, just enjoying life. Um, just thinking about it. I always want to be transparent with my audience. I want to be transparent with my people. I want to be able to talk to you about anything. So, um, there's this girl. And her name is so beautiful. Like, she is just like, the she is like just a walking goddess. Like, I always thought she was so lovely. And, <clears throat> I don't know, just, I always thought she was just beautiful. And, uh, she, and she was really cool to talk to. She just always was really, she just was, she just was really cool to talk to. Like, she just was a really easy person to have a conversation with. So, I, I, I had to appreciate that. Like, she just was really easy to talk to. And so... We used to we used to talk we used to talk all the time we used to talk all the time and um I just started talking to her on Saturday and we started talking through Facebook Messenger and, and uh, it, it feels weird it feels weird it kind of feels weird talking to her because you know of course she did used to date one of my good friends they broke they only dated for four months they broke up like years ago even then they I even not should be talking about it because he had a, he actually had a girlfriend back home in his in his um state. While they were dating, so I probably shouldn't be talking about it. I don't get you effed up. He who must not be named, because I don't know if you're dating your current your girlfriend out there now. But um, yeah, it was um, it was funny, man. Like she just like we just started having a conversation, man. I um, we just started having a conversation. I just started talking to her, you know, making her laugh. She making me laugh, and I don't know, I just started thinking like. Is you know she lives. She still goes to ASU. You know, of course, I've been kicked out of ASU. I'm never coming back. Um, really letting it out on this one. Sorry, I'm, I'm sharing the podcast right now. I'm trying to get some more listeners, but not really letting it out on this one. But um, <clears throat> you know um, you know we used to we used to. And so I was just talking to her on Saturday. I was talking to her on Saturday and just was talking to her and having a conversation with her. And, um, you know, then I just messaged her a few minutes ago. She was just laughing, joking, just some bullshit, you know. And I don't know. She lives so far away from me. She lives so far away. She lives in Arizona. I live in California, which, and, and once I say that, it's not that far, but I just don't like, I like long distance relationships, though, because I think it's fun. To, I think it's kind of cute to, you know, the the idea of like me living in San Francisco and me gassing all the way to San Diego to go visit her and talk with her and, you know, and do whatever, whatever, whatnot. Like I do, I think I do to some extent think that's really romantic. So I do like that kind of idea, but I don't know if a feeling is mutual, you know, trusting the tarot cards, I think it might be, you know, but um. <laughs> I know, I think it is, but I don't know. Even then, I don't even know if I put myself out there on the line. I don't even know if she responded to say yes. And then even then, I don't even know if I really would want to be in a relationship with her because she just, I don't know. I always say I don't want to be in a relationship, and I really don't. The reason why I always say I don't want to be in a relationship, because a lot of my listeners ask me this, and you guys are always, you guys are always on my line. You know, shout out to all my goofy goobers. That's the name of my podcast, people. If you want to be part of my podcast family, our names are the goofy goobers. The goofy goobers. Say it with me, goofy goobers. Exactly. So, you know, part of the reason, um, part of the reason that I, um, part of the reason that I, um, 
part of the reason that I don't want to be in a relationship, I guess, is because I guess to an extent I'm, I'm scared. You know, I'm scared of getting my heart hurt. I'm scared of getting my feelings hurt. I'm scared of, you know, there are like a lot of negative little demon biters, like a lot of just demonic worms with purple skin and the red eyes, you know, and you know, purple and red don't even go together. Like there are a lot of those little, like little demons and gremlins just living inside me. And a lot of the time they find their way out when I'm experiencing strong emotions, like all of us, like, like all of us, we're all like that. So my fear is, is I'm scared of being in a relationship with a girl and letting all those demons come out. You know, like when I, I grew up in a household where my stepfather he used to beat my mother. I'm talking about routinely. Like I'm talking about like it was like a like a VH1 reality show. Like every they used to argue all the time. They used to fight all the time. Like there is no reason if if reality TV shows were as popular as they have become when my mom and dad first got met, my mom and stepfather first got married in 1999. I promise you we, we would have been millionaires because they fought so much, like so much. Like they fought all the time. I wish I had odd I wish I had just one fight on audio. If I had one fight, just like a four two if I had a two minute and thirty seven second clip of my mom and stepfather getting into an argument, I promise you it would go viral. Three hundred million hits. We famous. Like it was that bad. And um yeah, man, it, it just was that bad. So, you know, like we, they used to just argue all the time, man. And I, it's, I'm, and my, you know, I am even, I am scared that, I am slightly scared that some of the demons that my father, that, that my stepfather had, that some of the demons that my stepfather had, that some of the issues with relationships with women, with men, you know, my stepfather was bisexual, that he has, I'm scared that those issues would seep into me. Like, so, you know, the biggest fear I have, man, is just being with a woman and taking out my frustrations out on her. You know, that's that's one of the biggest fears I have is like is like is like having kids and having a woman having a, having kids and having a woman and feeling so incomplete because of my love life and feeling so incomplete because of myself and and taking it out on my kids and taking it out on my wife. Like I'm that scares me more than anything else in the world, you know. I mean, I, I didn't really start coming to terms with that until like the last few weeks, so like I, I really, I really think I can't. I think I really can't be in a relationship until I've completed myself and I've achieved at least some level of success with my podcast, at least some level of success with my with my broadcasting career, and I, that's what I feel like. And I and I, I wanted, I want to have at least some level of success before I get in a relationship with somebody because. You know, one thing about me that's a gift and a curse is my idealism. You know, I'll, I'll always, I have the highest ideals. I have high ideals for what type of woman I want aesthetically, for what, how much money I want to make, how what level I want to live financially, for where I, where I want to live or what I can do. I have high ideals, just period, and that's just natural to me. And as I've gotten older, I've identified, I've identified with that high idealistic side of myself that likes to float in the clouds and dream of meeting Zeus and Hera and sitting courtside at the Golden Warriors games next to Apollo. Like, I've identified more with that side of myself because I've identified more with that side of myself because I feel like, I feel like, like, that's what makes me different. That's what gives me my, that's what gives me my work ethic, you know? And that's what makes me unique, you know. Me, me using my power, you, me using my talent, me using my ability to manifest, me using my ability to manifest in this world, you know, um, my ideals. Me using my power to manifest what I want to in this world, and um, you know, yeah, that that's just what I am. That's just what I do, you know. So, you know, and I think, and I think, and I, and I think to a certain extent, it's weird, like, you know, me doing this podcast. Me doing this podcast, I bring out the microphones. I I, I purchase the microphones. I purchase microphones. I purchase this. I purchase that. But I'm really thinking about like how I'm doing it right now. My YouTube video. I'm sorry for those who can't see it, my other my other channels. But like how I'm doing this live right now, where I'm just leaning on the bed and just talking to you close up. I'm thinking now. What I'm I want to do is I want to start doing it now, just like this, maybe because I feel like it's more. I feel like it's more intimate. Like you know, when I have the camera on my face and I have a microphone shoved in front of me. It's kind of hard for me to be intimate, but I do like the intimacy of this. Like, I do like, there's a certain amount of intimacy, I, I, a certain amount of connection I feel just being this close. Like, and I think, 
I like it like this. Like I might still do it on my podcast like this. Like on my Periscope. All my whenever I'm doing like a live video camera flip footage or something like that, I might start doing all of them like this, where I have like the camera camera just close like this and I'm live in front of you. You know. I feel like I feel like the connection's more I feel like the connection's more more natural like this. And so, you know, I might start doing it like this now. We'll see. But um yeah, man, what's going on with you? What's going on in your world? I'm over here spilling my hearts, my guts. What's going on with you? I don't know. I always talk about women because, you know, I'm a guy, and I always think about what woman, what woman I'm going to marry, what type of woman I'm going to marry. I was reading online, um, shout out to D-Storm Powers, and I apologize that I just spammed, like, your Facebook page the fuck up. Like, I literally was on this page just commenting, please come see my Facebook Please come see my YouTube channel. Please come see my Instagram. I was on there literally all, like, just spamming his page the fuck up. And I apologize about that. It's just, I, I mean, I, and that's one thing about it, man. When you're in the pursuit of fame, when you're in the pursuit of happiness, when you're in the pursuit of your dream and your goals, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes, man, not to sacrifice your, um, sacrifice your morality it's kind of hard to avoid sacrificing your morality to get to where you want to get to, you know. But, you know, needless to say, outside of that, that's, that's a conversation for another day. But outside of that, um, outside of that, outside of that, um, you know, we was, um, I was on and I saw that he started dating this girl. Really beautiful, really beautiful girl, really beautiful girl. Um, I can't think of her name. Very pretty. She looks fe- Indian, Indi- Indo-Fijian. But very pretty girl with curly hair, and uh, and it, it, it struck a chord with me seeing them together because I have been seeing for a long time that they had actually been floating around each other, making Vine videos and YouTube videos, Instagram videos together. You know, you might know who D Storm Power is. He's a dark skinned dude with the high cheekbone, the big eyes, and him and King Bosch, Kim and King Bosch, they kind of came up together at the same time in the whole Vine craze when Vine was really popping. You know, R.I.P. Vine. I'll shout out my Vine niggas, but um. So, you know, like he, um, it was, it was interesting seeing them together. Cause I was thinking like, I don't know, I was thinking like, um, I was thinking like, wow, like, like, wow, they would, they, they probably really became close friends without even knowing it. And they became, they were really kind of set planting the seeds for them to really have a loving relationship with one another. And they didn't even know it, you know, now they're together. Now they're both feeling complete and happy, you know, you know. I was thinking about that, like, wow, like, you know, that's, is that, is that what love is about, you know, you know, building a friendship with somebody beforehand, but I can't say, because I can't think of that, you know, I can't think of that many girls who I, in retrospect, now that I'm 25, looking, thinking of every girl I ever knew, all the girls, there was maybe one or two girls who I really would have wanted to be in a relationship with, and there was this one girl and I always remember her, you know, we we and her, we never, we never fucked, never even got close to fucking, we never even lay in the same bed with each other, you know, in fact, I remember she went off on me one time because I called her, I was hitting her and her friend after come to a birthday party was having, and I think, I think from the way I advertised the birthday party, it sounded like we were just calling her to come to this room and get a train ran on her by 37 guys. And it wasn't like that. I promise you I'm not like that. I don't even like running trains on girls. I've never done it. But I never like running trains on girls. In fact, I think that's one of the nastiest things that you can do. And um, she called, but she um, she hit me. She hit me and she was like, um, what happened? What, what ha- it was some way I said it. I think I, I think do I still have her? No, she deleted her Facebook. It was some way I said it to where I, she took it the wrong way. But I mean, because it wasn't like it was all guys. It was like half and half. It was the guys and girls. But anyway, point is, so uh, she might be one of the few people who I could look at and say, I wish I would have started a relationship with her. Lily, if you're watching this, Lily, her name was Lily. I really wish I could have started a relationship with you, Lily. You know, and not the Russian Lily. I love you too, Russian Lily, but not you. The the Assyrian Lily. I'll say that, the Assyrian Lily. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, you know, being mean, I think about this sometimes. You know, I think I think the theory, I think the general the general idea is when you get in a relationship with somebody nowadays, the more idealistic side of it or however it is, 
you should be in a relationship with somebody who you really can enjoy being around, who you really can, not who you can, but who you want to be around, like somebody who you want to really enjoy, somebody whose presence you really enjoy. And, you know, when I think about it, when I when I think about it, you know, when I think about when I think about her, I liked her because she was just she would just was the she just was the package. Like she 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 read a lot. She was really smart. She read all the time. She loved to travel. She loved the hike. She had traveled the whole world. Like the thing about me is I'm a nerd. So if I talk to a woman and she likes to read and stuff like that, that that always is like a big chemistry factor for me because I'm my half of my brain is in that nerd world. And and I was talking to my cousin about this the other day, and this is kind of makes it hard for me when I do podcasts is, is my world is like, my world, my world is like, um, <clears throat> my brain is never, my brain has never been in just one area of my whole life. Like my brain has never been that type where I love hip hop music and that's just it. I don't want to listen to country music. I don't want to listen to pop music. Matter of fact, when I was growing up, to be honest with you, the first genre of music that I really, really loved was NSYNC. I mean, it was pop music. So I loved NSYNC. I loved Backstreet Boys. I loved Dream Street. I loved Britney Spears. All that shit. I still slap that on Spotify. You know, R.I.P. to Dream Street was a great band. And R.I.P. to NSYNC was a good... It's gonna be May. It ain't no lie. I ain't gonna... Mm-hmm. You know how, the, how the song go? Every little thing I do doesn't seem enough for you. You don't want to lose it again, but I'm not like them. Baby, when you finally go sing it, get to know somebody, guess what? It's going to be mad. Shout out to music. I love them niggas, man. But so it's like, um, yeah, I was thinking like, um, we yeah, have stupid, but so I was going to say is like, yeah, so. <clears throat> I like my brain is always in that nerd world to some extent, but also just naturally, I'm a person who likes to have fun. I'm a person who likes to like I love to read and stuff like that. That's always an important part of me. But I love to, I love to communicate and I love to experience life more than I love to just sit down and read a book. Like I love, I love to actually go outside and explore and go to beaches and stuff like that. And a lot of the times in that nerd world. In the people who loved Harry Potter, in the world of people, in the world of people who love Percy and the Olympus, in the people, in the world of people who play video games all day, like one of my other cousins, they're not the most extroverted, outgoing, outdoorsy type people. Like most of them niggas have, most of them niggas, if they just walk outside for three for three thirty six seconds, they will just burn up in the sun and melt, you know. And I'm not like that, you know. I actually got sunburn right here. You can't see it no more. I got sunburn at one point because I was just going outside in the heat and running so much, you know. So. I, I love that, but what I liked about her was she was a good balance between all of those things. Like she knew the nerd world, she knew the pop world, she knew the nerd world, but at the same time, she loved to travel. She knew how to speak three languages. She had been to eat when I met her. She knew she had been to Egypt, Pakistan, Brazil, Turkey. Like she had been to all these places, you know. So she was like a person off of my own heart, and I I like that about her. You know, I like that. I really like that about her. And there was another girl, you know, Marcella. I think about her. I liked Marcella. I like people who are just, I like, I don't know. I like, I like, I don't know. But then it's like, I don't know. I just, I just, I have to, I have to be, I have to be satisfied with myself career-wise before I can get a relationship. I have to be just because if I don't, like I said, I just don't want to take that out again, take that out of my wife. Because I've seen that in a lot of relationships. I've seen where a guy, everything that a guy is unsatisfied with in his life, he takes that on his wife. Whether it's with my cousins in their relationships, whether it's with my stepfather in his relationship. You know, my stepfather was a closet homosexual. And so a lot of the time he would take out on my mom the fact that she wasn't a man. Which, how the fuck are you get mad at somebody because they don't have a dick? Like, that's just weird. But... You know, that was a house that I grew up in. And I think to some extent that's what gave me my outlook on life. It gave me such a kind of fucked up outlook on life was just growing up in a household like that. So, you know, like I just, I don't know, like, I don't know. Like, I, I think, I don't know, man. That just, that's, that's just, that's really what made me. Like, that was really what made me to an extent. Like, that's what, that was what created JT to some extent. It was like, um, was just experiences like that was just, experiences like that that was what made me so i don't know like i think i, th- I think about stuff like that sometimes i always think like, i always think about that like 
what created me, like what gave me my imagination, what gave me, what made me the way I am, what what made me think the way I think on certain things, you know, like, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I guess we could talk about that because I ain't talking about nothing else right now. So since we, since we just having real talk right now, we're just talking about life. Um, you know, I think the things that really made me probably, if I had to think about it, um, when I think about what really created JT, you know, um, it's, it was a lot of different things. I mean, it gave me my imagination, huh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, hold on, let's check something. Yeah, I think I think what gave me my imagination was just like, cause I always wanted. I remember, man, reading these. Um, shout out to Malcolm Gladwell. He has this really, really great book called The Outlier, The Outliers. And in the book, he was talking about how. Um, in the book, he was talking about how. Um, in the book, he's talking about how certain, certain, he was talking about how certain circumstances can create certain individuals or put, like, so how a lot of the times we think these people with these great talents and these great abilities, they're, like, so amazing and so magnificent. And he was saying, like, how a lot of these people, they're just, it's, it's, it's not so much of some divine gift or just a certain, a certain matching, of, a certain alignment of the planets that create these great individuals. That a lot of the t- that a lot of the time it's just a lot of the time it's just circumstances. You're saying a lot of the time it's just a lot of the time it's just people who are just um a lot of the time it's just people who are just in privileged situations or like he was saying like how when he had this really really interesting setup he had like how in Canada it was something like how the best hockey players come from Canada or something like that. It was because it was really cold or it, it was he just really went in depth with explaining like why people are great at certain things. Like, um, like I'll give you a prime example. I'll give you a prime example. And this is something I noticed. This wasn't something in this book, but it's something I noticed. So, generally in most households, from what I've seen, when you go to a household where you had a mother and a father, four or five kids, maybe two or three kids, or even just maybe two kids, and usually you'll have like an older brother or older sister or older sibling, generally the older brother or the older sibling, if it's at least three, because three is more, you know, it, gives, it makes me. It makes it easier for me to imagine the scenario better. Generally, in a household where you have like three siblings, three siblings, generally, the um, generally the 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 older sibling usually got the most spankings. Generally, the older sibling got the shit with that. Generally, the older sibling was the one who was getting dragged outside, getting beat with switches, getting irons thrown at him and stuff like that. But the youngest one, the parents usually go easy on. And my theory for that has always been is because I think I think the first sibling always gets the worst end of the stick because at the time it's it's, it's it's three things it's really three things one you know this is this is this is your parent this is your parents first kid they really don't know what the fuck they are doing they really have no clue at all what they're doing so they're gonna make some mistakes and one of them might be beating the shit out of them. <laughs> So by the time they get to the, your youngest sibling, and I'm talking to those of you guys who do have younger siblings, by the time they get to him, by the time they get to him, they've pretty much already they they kind of got a good idea of how many whoopings he how many whoopings the average kid needs. Second, they're just tired, you know. Once again, they're just tired, you know. They just they're just they're just tired, you know. They they wasted the first few years on you. They wasted the first few years giving you all. You got all the good weapons. They wasted the first few years giving you all the good weapons. They're just tired. And last but not least is the youngest child generally, and I don't know if it's because they're the baby in the family. I don't know if it's because the youngest is generally always the most adorable. And that it could be an aesthetic thing. It maybe it's an aesthetic thing. Maybe it's just personality. Maybe it's because they're favored the most. The youngest one is generally always the most, the almost Nine times out of ten, the youngest one is always the most adorable one. Just ge- generally, I don't know what it is, and it's, it's, it's always like that. Even aesthetically, the nine times out of ten, when I think of most times, it's, it's usually the most aesthetic. It's, it's not even this. It's not even aesthetically. It's just it's always that's always like the baby. I don't know if it's because it's the baby, but it's always the one that people always fall over. Like, oh my god, it's the baby! Like they always they people always fall over that one. You know, you know, and it's not it's not a. And it's not, it's not like it's a, um, it's not like it's a, um, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a, it's, it's, 
It's it's fucked up. Oh, well, I'm doing. I'm starting this periscope right now. I'm gonna start this periscope right now. It's not. It's like it's a bad. It's not like it's a bad thing. It's just. Hold on. Hold on, real quick. I'm starting my um periscope up. Praying to God, this is a freaking um burn my goddamn um computer up. I mean my um iPad up. Hold on. Hold on, real quick, real quick. What made you? Uh, what made you? What made you? What made you? Okay, hold on, real quick, real quick. Hold on. Pressing the buttons. Yeah, but but that was, but that was his, but that was his theory. And shout out to everybody who's watching me live right now on um. Shout out to everybody watching me live right now on um on Periscope. What's going on with you, so? You know that was, but that was his thing, and it, you know, and it was a cool theory. I mean, it's, it's dope. I do think, I do believe in. It. I do think sometimes we try to we we look at some people who are like really, really talented, like talented singers, talented actors, talented writers, and think, oh my God, they're so great because they have these there's these random circumstances that give them this ability. And a lot of the time, it's not like that. A lot of the time, it can be something as simple like, like nine times out of ten, most people who I've seen who are like great singers, like. Prime example singers, when you take a Luther Vandross, when you take a Aretha Franklin, when you take a Marvin Gaye, when you take all these people who are great singers or great performers, usually, is that what you mean, John, on my periscope? Usually, nine times out of ten, they were just people who they grew up in the church. You know, they grew up in churches, they grew up having to learn how to sing, they grew up they grew up in musical families. So, nine times out of ten, they grew up in a household where, it was, where the talent was, I won't say it's genetic, but it's like, it might have been talent. So, shout out to Diana. Diana said, hi. Hi, Diana. How are you doing? How are you doing, baby? But sometimes they grew up in a household where the talent was genetic or they grew up in a household where the talent was necessary for them to learn. So we look at the Chris Browns and the Aretha Franklins or the Taylor Swifts or the Katy Perrys. They sing so good because they grew up in families where or grew up in settings where they had to learn how to sing. So I do believe in that. I do believe sometimes you can break talent down like that, you know, even like with me. Like, but then I don't know because when I when I when I look at my life and I and I look at my life and look at everything that I'm good at, when I look at my life and consider all the things that I'm good at, you know, whether it's me writing, whether it's me talking to people, nine times out of ten it was just stuff that I just the kind of just was always. I don't want to say fell in my lap, but it was just stuff that was always there. You know, it was just stuff that was always like a. It was always stuff that was always like a part of me, so I never really had to work that hard for it. You know, like um, like um, this is everything. Like I, I can shoot just everything. I remember um, like even like my imagination. Problem with my imagination, I have an amazing fucking imagination. There's nobody on this planet who has an imagination like mine. Like my imagination is literally on some other level type stuff. Can't nobody, nobody here can see me. With, no, nobody in the world can see me when it comes to imagination. Like my imagination is literally like the dopest in the world. Like I can create some dope shit in my head. like dope, 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 dope. I'm talking about some dope stuff. And you, when I've looked online and I've read other people who are writers, when I looked online and read about other people who are Ryder, shout out to Diana again. He said hi. Di- Dylan Naz, he said hi. Hi, Dylan Naz, how are you doing? Um, when I've read about people who are dope creators and dope, dope people who had dope imaginations, usually it was because they grew up in households where they were alone most of the time or something like that. Shout out to Bomb Kush. Bomb Kush, how are you doing? They usually grew up in households where it was necessary for them to have a, they might have been alone a lot of the time, so they might have been alone a lot of the time, so they, they developed the imagination from that. But, you know, and I was alone. I had I had a few years straight where I was alone. I had a few years straight where I just I think from ten ten about eleven to about eleven to about fifteen was like a really really introverted antisocial time for me in my life. You know, I'll explain why later. But I've always, but I can always, but I'm saying that to say this. I've always had a pretty good imagination. Like I've always had a pretty good imagination. I never really had to struggle that much to. Never really had to never really had to struggle that much to kind of um oh yeah, it's good to stuff. I never really had to struggle that much to kind of grasp concepts or create worlds or I've always been able just to 
just have a just nat- naturally off the top of my dome, just imagine stuff this easily. And and when I think about it, I mean, I know this was natural to me. So I'm saying that to say that wasn't something I had to struggle to develop. It was just something I've always kept close to me. You know, even the, even with my writing skills, like writing songs, like a lot of people always tell me I'm really good at writing songs. A lot of people lose. Excuse me. A lot of people always tell me I'm really good at writing songs. A lot of people tell me I'm really good at writing lyrics. A lot of people tell me that. Me personally, I've always said the same thing. I've always been able to do this, like, all the time. Like, I've always been able to do it. I never had to struggle with it, which is weird because I'm so... It's funny. I'm so good with writing lyrics. I am terrible, fucking terrible with just writing regularly. Like, I have terrible handwriting. I'm terrible at writing essays. I cannot write prose for shit. Like, I'm really bad at just regular writing. And it's so funny. It's so funny. Shout out to Naya Santana. It's so weird kind of how that... It's weird how that process works, you know? So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think... I don't know. It's interesting. It's it's interesting how that works, man. I don't know. And it's it's kind of strange how talent works sometimes, you know. Because I've I always talk about that. I always fascinate. I had this conversation with my, I always had this conversation with my relatives all the time. I always asked, I always had a concert, conversation with them. Like, how do you explain talent? Like, what is talent? Like, how do you, how do you kind of conceive the idea of like what talent really is? And you know, and I think it just depends. Hold on. Hold on real quick. All right, you tell me, bro. Shout out to one dude who come and said what made me. Shit, what made you? Tell me. Tell me. There we go. Okay. Now, that being said, that being said, since we're back here again. So, yeah, I mean... So I think it takes a lot of it takes a lot of different things to make all of us. It takes a lot of different things, you know. But I was talking about like what creates talent, like what what creates talent. And I was thinking like, who knows what creates talent? It's, it can be sometimes it can be something that's purely scientific. Sometimes it can be something that's purely spiritual. Like who really knows what creates talent? Like it can be a lot of different things. <laughs> Yumi said, "Your shit lag like fuck. You may think you lie, but my regular not be." Oh, sorry about that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I shout to my dudes on Periscope. My video's lagging. I don't even know. Oh, well. Apologize about that, guys. But, you know, you guys going to have to deal with it. But those who are on Periscope, make sure you press the follow button. Follow me. Show love to your boy. Show love to the movement. Thank you for thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Much love. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, I think it takes a lot of different things, man. There's a lot of different things to make down here. You an Israelite? Shout out! No, I'm not an Israelite. <laughs> not not an Israelite. But can can Kim change? You know. But yeah, so it depends. On, it depends on a lot of different things, man. Um, that but that always fascinated me. The I've always been a fast. I've always been a fascinated with just great abilities above people. Shout out to Indian Queen. I've always been a fascinated with great abilities of of people. Uh, one guy said, "What's your nationality?" Then my nationality is African American. I'm Afro American. What's yours? So, like, whether somebody's a talented writer, whether somebody's a talented painter, whether somebody's good at football, or basketball, like even me, like, like I'll be honest, but most, but you know, but even then, I was thinking about that, and that's and this. What goes back to me, kind of contradicting the argument of Malcolm Gladwell and the argument of most scientists who can use circumstances to predict talent. Most of my abilities just come from just natural, just, I was always like that naturally. Like, I've always been able to be funny. I've always been that to been able to talk to people. I've always, I've always been able to be, just be able to do so many different things. One guy said, how come you come from two places? Two places? I come from one place. I'm, I'm African American. I'm Afro American. Or Black American. Just whichever one, whichever term sounds best. So, I've always been able, but I've always been able to, um, I've always been able to do different things. So, I don't know, like, I've always been able to be good at those certain areas, and I've improved in areas that I didn't used to be good in, like, even, like, dressing, I used to be the worst dresser, but now, you know what the funny thing about dressing is, I'll tell you, the funniest thing about dressing, shout out to Fuck121, who said, black is a is a color, afro is a hairstyle, that's true, that's true, you can say that, but also you can say that afro is a term used to describe people who are from the afro diaspora, like afro Cubans, afro Colombians, and afro Americans, so, either or. But 
Yeah, most things have always just naturally been good. I've improved, but like even like with dressing, I used to be a terrible dresser. I got better at dressing because I got better at dressing because I just started really like before I would before every time now when I buy an outfit, when I'm about to buy an outfit, like what I'll do is is when I'm about to buy an outfit, what I'll do is I'll just try to be as sensitive as my brain will allow me to be with seeing if I really like what I'm about to buy. I'm, I try to make myself as sensitive as possible to what I'm about to buy. Make myself think like, like, like say for example, if I put on the outfit, if I get a feeling in my gut that's like, Ugh, it like, Ugh, I won't leave the house until I get rid of that. Ugh. And I don't care how many times I have to change clothes. I don't care how many times I have to change. I will not leave the house until I get rid of that Ugh, feeling. Like I have to, I have to figure that out. And that's what makes me a better dresser. Even like with music, I used to be off rhythm and shit, like when I would be dancing and stuff. But I started really paying attention to the rhythm when I danced. I started really paying attention to it. You know, granted, versus there are some people who are just naturally talented, who just really just have a good ear for music and just hear the rhythm naturally. You know, most of the time, I think about it, most of the things that I wasn't good at, it generally stems from me having a very, very short attention span. And that's always been a problem with me. Like, I'm all, like, that's. Shout out to this Da Silva Freire. That's a long ass name. Like most of my problems have always, most of my handicaps in life have always stemmed from me having a short attention span, and I gotta work on that. Like it, that's like that's like one of my defaults. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get better at that. You know, you know, and I, you know, hell, you know, I, mean, I have gotten better. You know, I, hell, I'm sitting here and talking. But it's different because I do a podcast. I feel like I'm. When I do a podcast, I feel like I'm alive. Like I, I feel like this is my destiny. Like I feel like. This is my calling. I feel like this is what gives me respect. Like, I feel like when I'm doing a podcast, it feels home. When I'm doing a podcast, it feels... When I'm doing a podcast, it feels like God has found me and said, this is what you're supposed to do in life. Like, And it's just different, man. You know, I was talking to my aunt about this a few minutes ago. I was like, well, not really, I damn near two hours ago. Now I've been talking to you guys for so long. But I was talking to her about, like, how, you know... I was telling her about like when I do stuff like why I do podcasts and why I'm so passionate about podcasting. Right now I'm gonna switch this one to Instagram Live now. But like um like I was telling her about like how why I'm so passionate about podcasting and she's like, like why do you like doing it? And I was telling her, she asked me, she said, No, why do you like doing it? You know, why do you this thing? Hold on. Hold on, okay, come on. Hold on. Hold on. Going live on Instagram now. How do you go live on Instagram? Uh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's okay. Yeah, we got Instagram live right now. So. Like, hey, shout out to everybody on Instagram. How you guys doing? So, you know, uh, what was I going to say? I had it in my head. I was, she asked me, like, she's like, why do you like podcasting so much? Why do you like broadcasting so much? Like, why do you love these things so much? And what I told her was just, what I told her was I was just was like, because this is just, this is just really what I enjoy doing. Like, this is really what I, this is really what I love and really what I enjoy. Like, this is, it just, when I'm in front of people, when I'm in front of when I'm in in front of the camera, when I'm talking to people, when I'm in front of a microphone, it's like this euphoric feeling I get. Like I feel, I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be at, and it's no question in my mind when I'm doing it. Like I feel like that's where I'm supposed to be at, and I I follow that feeling. You know, that's why. And I've tried a lot of different things. I've I've experimented a lot of stuff. You know, no drugs. I never. I don't really do drugs. I don't do drugs or drink alcohol, but like. Try spoken word, try rapping, try singing, but just none of it gives me that feel. Excuse me, none of it gives me that. None of it gives me that feeling that. None of it gives me that feeling that 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 live broadcasting, that podcasting does. Like none of it gives me that feeling. And I know it's just the thing I love to do. I can't really, I can't really, can't really like. I can't really like give it to you any better than that. It's just the things I really enjoy doing, you know. So, you know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just, and I, I know, you know, 
by the grace of God, this is where I find myself doing. This is what I find myself doing in my recreational time, talking to the people, connecting with the people, talking to you guys, having a conversation with you guys about what's going on in my world, about what's going on in my life, you know. You know, and that's, and I feel, and I feel happy, you know. I mean, I would feel a lot happier if more motherfuckers would pay attention to me, but, you know, I don't, I'm okay. I'm cool with it, you know. Hey, hey, hey. it's whatever. You know, people on my podcast, I'm going to turn the, people on YouTube Live, people on my Instagram Live, I'm still here. People on my podcast, I'm going to end the podcast. So make sure you tune in. Make sure you, if you're listening to me live right now through the podcast app, I want to thank you so much. But also, make sure you download the podcast at Google Play or subscribe to my iTunes. Thank you so much. Thank you.